All right. Since I always used to complain about portrait style videos, uh, I'm going to try to start doing these uh, wide widescreen ones that actually fit on the, on YouTube just right. It's a little bit harder to hold the phone like this. And you know, portrait mode, it, it's got its place. You know, it's for filming a portrait. <laughs> probably why it's called that but uh, and that is exactly what I'm doing okay so can't remember exactly where I left off uh, let's see I went on a trip with uh, my brother uh, oh yeah my younger brother was born uh, in July 7th, 1988, so he's four years younger than me. And, uh, of course, he went with us. Now, he didn't go with me and my dad when I was seven the first time. He stayed home. Uh, but on the second trip, he went with us, and uh, we went all over the place. We went to Seattle and visited some family there, and... Uh, some more family in Billings, Montana, or, or maybe it was Idaho, or maybe both. Anyway, not important. Uh, let's see. Okay, when when I was nine years old, I think uh, going from the fourth grade to the fifth grade. Uh, we moved from Little Rock to Maumelle. I think I've already mentioned that, but that, uh, so I went, I was going to Baker Elementary, which is off of Canis Road in, in Little Rock, uh, and I finished fourth grade there, but I had to start fifth grade at a different school. I went to like a magnet school in Little Rock, even though we lived in Maumelle. Even though we lived in Maumelle. Yeah, I went to this magnet school. I guess maybe they thought that it was called uh, Martin Luther King Junior Magnet School or something like that. Uh... It was all right. I liked my teacher there. Uh, she actually lived in Maumel too. And, but anyway, I, I didn't really like it that much, I guess. And so, I, or, and a lot of it was I wanted to be able to ride my bike to school. And so, I uh, I asked my parents if I could go to the school that was there in Maumel called Pine Forest Elementary. And so uh, I, I think I started there like halfway through fifth grade and, uh, and then finished sixth grade there. But you know, us, uh, us moving from us moving from Little Rock to Maumelle, I don't know, that was the first time I kind of lost all my friends. And it started to kind of affect me. Like, uh, my grades started slipping and stuff like that. And I was never, like, a straight-A student after that. So, that was, uh, excuse me. Fucking mean mugging me. <laughs> anyway, that was the uh, first instance of kind of loss of friends and, 
having a, kind of a detrimental effect on me. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. So when I was four years old, my brother, he was just, you know, barely over a year old. We were, uh, we were riding in the car, or, or my mom was taking us somewhere before she went to work. And uh, I'll never forget exactly where this accident took place. It was, uh, so there's Colonel Glenn Road, and, and Colonel Glenn uh, intersects Interstate 430. And so if you're headed, um, so we were headed east on Colonel Glenn, about to tur uh, turn left to get onto the on-ramp for 430, to go on 430 north. And as best I can remember, I guess when my mom turned left, there was somebody coming, uh, headed uh, west, I guess, on the, in the other lane, on Colonel Glenn, and they hit us. But the weird thing about this is, the weird thing about this is, uh, I don't know, just my memory of the event doesn't make sense. I remember hearing a lot of like screeching sounds like before the impact. But there shouldn't have been that. Like my mom, she was the one that got hit. She shouldn't have, we shouldn't have been screeching before the impact. So the only thing I can think of is maybe that was the other person, but I remember screeching and the car shaking and stuff before the impact. Uh, so that really, it still doesn't make sense to me. But anyway, I got an injury, even though I was in the back seat, I think I wasn't wearing my shoulder strap. And so I, I had a cut on my forehead and but there was no logical explanation for how I could have got that cut I mean one of my first memories after it happened was looking down and seeing blood dripping right and so the explanation was that I had like my hand flew up or something and I I cut my forehead on my hand, or on my thumbnail, or something like that. And the more I think about that, the less and less sense it makes to me. But nah, I guess it's plausible, right? What else could it be? Uh, but by far, the weirdest thing about all of it is that the scar that it left, that had has just recently really become invisible mostly it kind of it's maybe I'll try to show it later on but it's a, it was in the shape of an L perfectly <laughs> it reminds me of that that uh smash mouth song uh all star or whatever uh, with her finger and her thumb in the shape of an L on her forehead like that I don't know how, how many people does that happen to so we got uh, our first very uh, crazy kind of coincidental weird occurrence in my life there I mean, what, what, what could be the only worse thing than that? You know, having a car accident and, and somehow a swastika gets cut into your forehead or something? and it, it, Like Charles Manson? <laughs> uh, how long is this? Ten minutes, okay. I 
I guess. Yeah, I remember, so, the ambulance came or whatever, and I, I was, I hope I wasn't covering up the mic. Crap. Ambulance came or whatever, and, uh, I was too afraid to go in the ambulance, so I requested to ride with my dad to the hospital. But, um, that was pretty much the end of that. I had to get some stitches and stuff. I remember it hurt pretty bad. I do also, uh, one of the weird things I remember is in the hospital they had uh, towels that had the logo on it and I think it was, maybe it was Arkansas Children's Hospital, maybe, and, and I asked the nurse if I could have one of the towels and she let me have it and I thought that was the coolest thing ever. So, I guess I did kind of backtrack a little bit to talk about the accident, but, uh, okay, so let's move forward a little bit. Uh, I went to Fuller Junior High, which had like a gifted and talented program or whatever, and so that's why I went there, because I did some good scoring on some tests or whatever, and, uh, And, uh, and I think my grandma, like, she gave me an IQ test and stuff like that. And, and maybe that also helped to get me in there. I don't know. Because it was, it turned out pretty good, too. And. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so, uh, in at Fuller, I think I joined the band or whatever. And uh, to play the snare drum, I always liked the drums. Oh yeah! Uh, so for Christmas one year, this was around the same time, seventh grade. Uh, I asked my grandma to get me a mini disc player. It was a really cool one, a really nice one. It was like made out of metal on the outside. Uh, and it had like an optical port you could plug it up to a something else that had an optical port like a CD player which I had one and, and it and record pretty much perfect digital copy of, of whatever and so I would do a, I would do that record a lot of my CDs to the mini discs uh, this would be now that I think about it see seventh grade would be one of the first times that something very valuable of mine was stolen. And and trust me, it is a, a ridiculous pattern that will repeat so many times, you'll begin to see that there's no way it could be an accident. Uh, so yeah, anyway, I, something happened and that mini disc player that I love so much uh, got stolen. I haven't seen it since. And so right around the same time, I bought a tape player, or somebody bought it for me, I can't remember. Uh, you know, like a cassette player. And that's what I would use for my music and stuff. I remember one of the first albums I got on cassette was uh, uh, Load by Metallica. I, I, I like that album a lot. I would listen to that a lot. And so anyway, back to being in band and Fuller. Uh, it seemed like no matter how hard I tried, even though I knew I was really talented at drums, and naturally so, I, I still know that I am, I, I could just never... get good enough to, it just, I was never any good, it, it, it just didn't make sense, you know, uh, 
I always kind of attributed it to, oh, maybe I just didn't practice enough. No, no. Even if I didn't, I was just so naturally good at it, I should have been pretty good. But no, I wound up, uh, I went to this honor band thing, and they put me on the timpanis, and it, I just didn't do very well. It sucked. Uh, you know, I tried. But this is going to be a common theme. And I'm going to give you a hint as to what my hypothesis is right now. And you're going to find it weird right now, but I think by the time I'm totally done with all of this, you might either come to agree or at least sympathize with why I think so. I feel like through one way, through whatever means, throughout almost my entire life, I was being artificially limited so as not, so, so that I would never achieve any great success or talent. Uh, later on down the line, we'll get to why I kind of came to that conclusion. Um, because I know, like, later in my life, I was able to tell that something like that was being done to me at that point in my life. And so then I started thinking back, you know, going further, further back in the past and noticing that pattern. And, and I remember coming to the realization, oh, my God. Okay, so I know it had been done to me recently, but it appears as though it's been done to me my entire life. What is that? That's, I mean, what? It's so weird. Who could possibly be responsible for something like that? It, and I went through all kinds of crazy hypotheses about who, why, uh, you know, was it God? Was it the devil? <laughs> was it aliens? Was it government? Etc. Etc. And uh, to be honest with you, I still haven't settled on anything really. I've got my favorites, but anyway. Uh, so, uh, oh, you'll notice the pattern with the with females too. I always just kind of chalked it up. Well, maybe I'm just a piece of shit. And nobody likes me. But that, that I knew, I started to realize that wasn't it either. I started to realize I was very, very likable. Almost too much. <laughs> Almost too nice. And like, and then, well, and then I thought, well, maybe I'm just too nice. And maybe that's it. No. Because there are some people that like nice, really nice people, right? And so you think that maybe I would have run into one of them at some point. But anyway... Uh, I think the, the first girl I met that could be officially said to be my girlfriend, uh, I met in seventh grade when I was, oh wait, no, I met her in seventh grade, but we didn't like get together, right, until eighth or ninth grade maybe, when I was 13 or 14, uh, this is the same girl that I talked about earlier in my earlier video where I moved in with her and, and her grandparents. Is it just me or does my face look really shiny like I've been sweating a lot? Because I have. <laughs> it's It was actually cooler today than it has been, but I was still sweating a lot. Anyway, uh, we're up to 19 minutes. This is just a continuation of the last video, so I'm going to cut this one a little short. Uh, like I did the last one, and uh, we'll pick up maybe tomorrow. I have a fantastic, oh, that's cool. There's a helicopter with a searchlight. 